हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑफ द रूल ऑफ द रोड बाय फेमस एसेस्ट एंड जर्नलिस्ट ए जी गार्डिना सो टुडे इट सीम्स टू बी द लास्ट लेक्चर सो लेट अस क्विकली गो इन टू द चैप्टर बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द चैप्टर लेट अस हैव अ क्विक रिकैप ऑफ द प्रीवियस लेक्चर what are the things that we have noticed in the previous lecture in the previous lecture the author tries to explain how we are free to only a certain limit as far as our personal choices are concerned but once we move out of that territory of personal choices once we step into society our right or liberty is limited by other people's use of liberty hence it calls for an accommodation and adjustment of liberty when we are present in society he feels that a reasonable consideration for the rights liberty and feelings of others should always be the foundation the base of social conduct that means our behavior should always be guided by our understanding of other people's rights and liberty as such he is talking about mutual respect towards others liberties okay so let us quickly go into the remaining part of the essay and see for ourselves what else gardiner has to say about liberty any rights i believe that the rights of small people and quiet people see small people and quiet people they are not literary meaning it means people who are weak in comparison okay so he writes that i believe that the rights of small people and quiet people are as important to preserve as the rights of small nationalities just like smaller nations or weaker nations do have a right to exist in liberty not to be dominated by a greater nation similarly weaker section of people they should also be allowed equal liberty to exist as free individual this is what the order is trying to explain when i hear the aggressive bullying horn horn means referring to the uh you know the car horns okay car horns or motor vehicle horns which some motorist deliberately used deliberately means intentionally i confess that i feel something boiling up in me something boiling up that means he is talking about how he becomes angry and his he he gets you know aggressive he is angered seeing what seeing how there are some motorists some people who drive their vehicles they sometimes have the tendency of blowing their horns excessively despite noticing the traffic signs and at such moments the order he becomes restless he finds that something becomes aggravated inside him his his blood boils which is very like what i felt when germany came trampling like a bully over belgium he is giving an example he was as much aggrieved as much tensed when during the second world war germany had dominated belgium 
now germany as you know it's one of the superpowers okay very powerful nation and it was very very powerful and dominating and aggressive a nation especially under the regime of hitler i suppose all of you have heard about hitler and during that time germany had occupied belgium belgium which was weaker and lesser in power in comparison with Germany here some way or the other the author feels that the right and liberty of the people of Belgium that was being crushed that was being trampled upon trampled you know when you destroy something by stamping your foot upon it you trample and crush Germany had crushed the emotions the feelings of the people of belgium which is all very wrong because though belgium is a small nation the people the nation itself had the right to exist in liberty so he feels that the motorists who honk their horns aggressively on road they are no different from the german dictators okay it is as much wrong as conquering a weaker nation this is what he is trying to say by what right by what right my dear sir do you go along our highway uttering that hideous curse on all who impede your path cannot you announce your coming like a gentleman cannot you take your turn so he is questioning the gentleman who constantly honks or presses upon the horns i think you might have noticed that sometimes in traffic though the signal or the traffic light is red there are some people if they find a car just before them the moment the green light is on or even before that they would be pressing the horns aggressively as if they are in a different kind of a hurry they must understand that the other people who are before them or after them they are also in some kind of hurry why should he press the horn when others are not doing i suppose you know uh, that honking of horns it has led to a great increase in noise pollution as such so it is not only a uh, you know destruction of social liberty social order but also a very sickening condition it is also something uh, that is uh, you know constantly increasing aggression among the public it's not good for your health as well but then there are certain people who won't understand you know instead of behaving like a gentleman they become unruly on road it is then that they have to remember the rule of the road they have to remember that the society is meant for one and all they have to remember that liberty has to be preserved for one and all because liberty it is not a personal asset they must remember if they cross their limit it would lead to social anarchy so here again you find gardiner giving an example of how on the road personal liberty sometimes can lead to social anarchy right but here he is questioning he is asking this man that can't you just stop for a while and think as a gentleman can't you wait for your chance right next so these are some of the traffic signals that we find on the road yes the speed limit the turns the traffic lights the places where horn shouldn't be pressed too much but there are very few people who actually follow these rules and then he writes 
that and there is the more harmless person who has bought a very blatant gramophone so once again he comes up with another personal experience an example an anecdote and he writes that on sunday afternoon sets the thing going opens the window and fills the street with keep the home fires burning or some similar banality so he is giving the example of he is referring to maybe a neighbor or maybe an individual whom he knew and this man he had purchased a gramophone with much interest he had purchased this gramophone blatant blatant means old fashioned and this is the picture of a gramophone if you haven't seen i suppose most of you know but then still if you haven't seen you can see this picture it is very it is considered to be an antique nowadays okay and this man what he would do every sunday especially on afternoons he would be playing music okay songs like keep the home fires burning or some similar banality banality means he is referring the author is referring to this kinds of songs to be something that is trivial or commonplace nothing particular nothing special not soft music okay something uh, very you know something that has become out of date now this man would be constantly playing that uh, gramophone on sunday afternoon and talking about sunday afternoon we all know that sundays are meant for rest and relaxation isn't it everybody loves to have rest that day without noise and you know keeping though you want to enjoy something on your own that is restricted to your room nobody wishes to be you know interfered by outside intruders isn't it but then this man he would be playing this songs old songs in a very loud tone you can call it what are the right limits of social behavior in a matter of this sort let us take the trombone as an illustration now trombone what is a trombone if you can see this okay the trombone uh maybe i had shown you one picture earlier it's missing now it's not here but then yes the trombone is a pipe like you know it, it's a trumpet like device that i had shown you in my previous uh, lecture also so he is giving the example of a trombone let us take the trombone as an illustration as an example and he writes that haslet said that a man who wanted to learn that fearsome instrument was entitled to learn it in his own house who is william haslet william haslet he is an uh, recognized english essayist dramatist and uh, literary critic painter social commentator and philosopher okay he is considered to be one of the greatest critics and essayist uh, in the history of english language in the order of samuel johnson and george orwell some of the modern day essays right samuel johnson one of the earliest essays and george orwell writing almost equally together with william haslet and haslet he had said that when a person is practicing something like a trombone he is free to do that because he has the liberty to learn music or a trombone or be it any other musical device but in his own house even though he was a nuisance to his neighbors but it was his business to make the nuisance as slight as possible so yes the voice or the sound of the trombone it's not very pleasant to the ears but still he has the right and the liberty to learn it but 
he it is his effort it should be his effort to see that his neighbors are not disturbed okay and that is why he should try to lower the disturbance lower the noise as much as possible okay so this is what he is saying similarly this man with the gramophone he had the right to listen to songs be it a banality be it something old or new it doesn't matter but it should have been a reminder it should have been his you know conscience telling him that there are other people living beside me and they should also enjoy their share of liberty that is why what should he have done he should have played the music in such a way that it doesn't disturb other people living in the society or the person living next door right so here some way or the other this gentleman with the gramophone he is making excessive use of his personal liberty which is ultimately again leading to social anarchy and giving example of hazlitt the order says that even a philosopher and critic and essays like hazlitt had uh, you know told so that if you have to make sound or noise you are free to do so but then it should be done within your boundary within your uh, you know within closed rooms okay so this is what he says and hazlitt has an advice for people who would like to practice the trombone he says that he must practice in the attic now what is an attic see the picture that is given here the space between the top floor and the roof okay the triangular space which makes up a room space okay a triangular room space this is called an attic okay so a person willing to practice the trombone should practice it in the attic and shut the window not without shutting the window he must always keep the window shut and practice in the attic so that the noise does not leak out he had no right to sit uh no right to sit in his front room open the window and blow his noise into his neighbor's ears with the maximum of violence and so with the gramophone if you like the gramophone you are entitled to have it but you are interfering with the liberties of your neighbors if you don't do what you can to limit the noise of to your own household your neighbors may not like keep the house of uh, house fires burning they may prefer to have their sunday afternoon undisturbed and it is as great an impertinence impertinence means rudeness for you to willfully to trespass on their peace as it would be to go unasked into their gardens and trample on the flower beds so what is the other saying here he is saying that just like that just like a person practicing a trombone he has no right to blow the noise into a neighbor's ears similarly a person who wishes to or wills to or desires to listen to a gramophone can do so but he has no right to disturb the silence or the you know the desirable peace of his neighbors right so that is as rude as you know entering someone's garden and trampling or you know crushing the flower bed your neighbor has delicately built up the flower bed raising flowers but suppose you go into that garden without asking the owner's permission and you destroy the flower beds how would it feel like similar is the feeling when you disturb someone else's 
peace and silence when they desire it the most especially when you are in society remember the example that he had given about practicing the trombone on helvelin he says that you have the right to play the trombone but where on the top of helvelin why because it is an isolated place there are no people residing near about understood i suppose you have understood this much yes shall we move to the next paragraph i suppose the fact is that we can neither be complete anarchist no complete socialist in this complex world this is a complex world he's talking about being an anarchist or socialist now who are anarchist anarchist are people who believe or who try to bring about anarchy anarchy again lawlessness you are not going to follow your law it is not a bad thing to be an anarchist because many of the revolutionaries they were anarchists they went against law to achieve certain ends but then complete lawlessness that is also not possible he says because we are living in a society so this is anarchist and who are socialist these are the some of the popular socialist i suppose you recognize the pictures here who is the first picture yes of course he is none but our own father of the nation mahatma gandhi the second picture is that of martin luther king the third picture yes science students you must be knowing he is none but albert einstein now these people were considered to be socialist why because they advocated or practiced socialism they tried to speak for the common people for society they did not care for their own personal benefit without looking for a benefit when a person works for the society he is called the socialist now it is not possible for everyone to be a socialist or a anarchist okay we can be a we should be some part of us must be tending towards socialism whereas some part must be aggressive must be for a anarchism or we should be somewhat anarchist and somewhat socialist that means what what is the author trying to say that we rather must be a judicious mixture of both we should be a balance what kind of a balance a judicious mixture a proportionate mixture of both of anarchist and of socialist because why he says we have both liberties to preserve our individual liberty and our social liberty if somebody tries to snatch our individual liberty you have to be like an anarchist and when we think about others liberty or social liberty when we consider that other people also have their liberty if we work for it we have to behave like the socialist right so this is what the author is trying to say because this is a complex world we have different kind of people living over here a person might there are people who love loud music there are people who love slow and gentle and soft music isn't it some people like jazz some like very slow romantic songs nothing is bad so we have to exist within that we have to accommodate and adjust within that difference that exist right so this is what he is saying that we cannot so keep uh, standing or being a part of such a complex world it is not possible for us to be 
you know taking sides we cannot be that's why he says we cannot be complete anarchist or we cannot be complete socialist we have to maintain personal liberty as well as we have to think about other people's liberty that is social liberty right that is why what we should be we should be 50% anarchist and 50% socialist we must be a balance of this kind we must be a judicious mixture then he writes that it is the in the small matters of conduct in the observance of the rule of the road that we pass judgment on ourselves and declare that we are civilized or uncivilized so not our dress not our apparel not our money but it is our way of conduct it is our social conduct in the small matters of conduct as small as maintaining the rules of the road that we pass judgment on ourselves that we can justify ourselves that we can understand ourselves whether we are civilized or uncivilized so the moment you are automatically tended towards following the rules of the road you know that you are a cultured person you are a civilized person but whenever you find that you have trouble following the rule of the road you understand that you are not you are uncivilized there is a lot that you have to learn the great moments of heroism and sacrifice are rare heroism and sacrifice bhagat singh an example of hero heroism Jesus Christ an excellent example of sacrifice Bhagat Singh was fearless and he had fearlessly given up his life for the sake of the country the nation can you be bhagat singh yes but very very few of you very few of you very scanty numbers just 1 or 2% of the whole 100% would be willing to give up their life for the country the nation jesus christ he sacrificed his life for whom for the entire humanity he was crucified alive you know he was alive when he was nailed on the cross can you have that kind of a resistance that kind of a patience do you have that kind of an ability to sacrifice or desire to sacrifice yourself for the nation for the humanity no even if you have only as i have told you earlier also just 2% of the entire 100 percent people so it is not possible for one and all of us to be heroic or to sacrifice as such these moments of heroism and sacrifice are rare very very less in amount it is the little habits of common place intercourse common place means day to day or mundane or ordinary intercourse means exchange daily transaction the daily behavior social conduct okay so he writes that it is the little habits of common place intercourse that make up the great sum of life and sweeten or make bitter the journey okay it is the little habits the small small habits the practices that we do every day the everyday practices the way we exchange the way we behave in society these are the things that add up that make our life our journey either sweet or bitter okay life is a long journey 
we don't know where it will culminate but our journey of life that becomes sweet that becomes pleasurable that becomes enjoyable only and only when we know how to conduct ourselves in society okay so if we have that reasonable consideration for the you know rights and liberties and feelings of others we would be able to lead a sweet life by balancing ourselves by being neither an anarchist nor a socialist but a judicious mixture of both we can make our life sweeter okay not bitter understand okay i hope my friend in the railway carriage will reflect on this now as he as gardiner writes the essay he is also contemplating he is also reflecting upon that person whom he once met as a passenger in a railway carriage and he remembers uh, and he feels that probably this friend this co-passenger he would also be reading this article somewhere in the newspaper maybe after reading this article he would be able to reflect reflect means think he would be able to think very seriously this is the meaning of reflecting okay serious thinking thinking on what thinking on the mistake that he had committed that day remember the instance the other he was trying to read a blue book do some serious study but he could not do that why because this gentleman the co-passenger he was talking in a very loud and pompous voice and our author he had to shut down his book and look outside so here again talking about his that previous experience that friend he writes then he will not cease i am sure to explain to his neighbor where the french went wrong and where the germans went ditto ditto means same wrong but he will do it in a way that will permit me to read my blue book undisturbed but i suppose he says that i suppose after reading this article he would understand how to behave or how to conduct in society how you know he is not putting the author is not telling or compelling this man to stop exchanging his knowledge he can continue his conversation he can continue his discussions on politics and world politics and you know different aspects that he was talking that day also but then in a manner that would also offers equal space to the other passengers in the carriage just like the other maybe there will be a day when he would be able to work out or work and read on his blue book without being disturbed that day this man would allow the chance to our author to continue with his study in his own space and he will continue his conversation but in a lower voice okay that means he will understand that it is necessary to preserve social liberty as much as individual liberty so from various by citing various examples on the road from the road how people conduct themselves on the road in a carriage in a vehicle okay on the road in the traffic the author constantly tries to focus on one thing and that is how liberties of all can be preserved and how individual liberty does not turn into social chaos or anarchy okay so what are the things that he tells us from the beginning he tells us that we have to understand that individual liberty if not checked that would become social anarchy 
we must remember that when someone is asking you to curtail or cut down your private liberty just like the traffic policeman he is not talking about or he is not propagating tyranny but he is trying to make the liberty successful for one and all next author tells us that liberty is not a personal asset gardiner tells us that liberty is not a personal affair but a social contract a contract which has been signed duly by every citizen living in society and as such as such we have to accommodate our liberty so that space can be made up for other people's liberty as well he says that social conduct social conduct should always be based on a reasonable consideration for what for the rights feelings and liberties of other he believes that the right of weak people small people quiet people they are as much necessary to be preserved as much as weak nationalities weak nations okay so instead of bullying others you should learn how to respect others liberties giving an example he says that playing a trombone or playing a gramophone you have the right to play the trombone or the gramophone but in a manner that does not interrupt other people's desire for silence peace and quietness so what should we do he is giving us a suggestion that we should all try to preserve both forms of liberties that is individual liberty and social liberty which can be done by being a judicious mixture of anarchist and socialist last but not the least he tells us that we cannot be heroic or we cannot sacrifice our life but by making our journey sweet by behaving properly conducting properly in the society by showing respect towards others liberties while respecting ours we can make our life successful beautiful and sweet okay dear students i suppose you have understood that what is the importance of mutual understanding and mutual respect for liberty liberty cannot be successful or you know you cannot have the real feeling of liberty unless and until you learn to respect others liberties as well okay so social conduct that should be learned and you should make it a prime concern that respect or consideration for others peop other people's rights and feelings that should be the base of your social behavior right with these thoughts i leave the class today i suppose it has been clear to you yes so if you have any doubts i'm sure you will be calling me up contacting me you are always welcome and uh, i consider that this is the last lecture on the rule of the road so see you next time thank you very much